Hey, what's up guys? In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add a procedural jump. What we're going to do basically is to add some sort of motion to the weapon whenever the character jumps and also fix a few small issues we have and we've left in the past few tutorials. For instance, we still have this line trace on the, on the screen, which we don't really want. And then one other thing we have, which we really don't want, is that whenever you jump, the character kind of walks. That we should solve as well. In fact, let's start with that because it's the easiest thing to fix. Actually, both of them are very easy to fix, but let's start with that one. So to make the character not walk when you move up, all we need to do is go to the character animation blueprint, which again, as always, is an FPS tutorial or ABP character. I already have it open right here. And then in our event graph where we were getting the velocity, it turns out that this velocity also has a Z component, so a up component that gets changed when you jump. So if I debug it, you will see. If I jump, that value is going to change. We don't want to account for that whenever we check if, if the character is kind of changing its velocity in any way. So we're going to remove that. So first, we're going to unhook this from here. You can either alt click or control click and drag it out. We're going to right click and split structure pin and then right click here and split the struct pin and now connect only the X and the Y and ignore the Z completely. That will always be zero so that when we check if, it, if the movement is bigger than zero, we don't have any sort of Z input. It's always zero. So if these two are zero, it's always going to be zero. So let's let's go back to the game. If I jump now, we're not going to be walking. We're only going to be walking if we're really walking, which is great. Let's uh, remove this print string. Now, the other fix we need is to remove that line trace from the screen. And to do that, I'm just going to find the tick event, which I can find from here, tick. And inside here, I'm going to find the line trace and in draw debug type, if it's set to anything other than none, just set it to none and compile. Okay, that's it. That was the two kind of small fixes that I wanted to make before we started with the procedural jump. Now, let's start with all the procedural jumping stuff. This is going to be a little bit more complicated, though not very complicated. We're going to use concepts that we've already discussed and, and used before. First thing we're going to need to do is go to the animation blueprint. That's where we will do all this. The only thing that we're going to do in this tutorial specifically with the procedural jump is we're going to kind of simulate a movement similar to the weapon rotating up and then rotating down as you move um, or as you fall. Um, I'm going to just show you by copying this transform modified bone. I'm going to place it here and I'm going to show you the effect. Let's remove the rotation for a moment. Let's actually remove the location too. And the idea with the effect is that we will get something like this. So when the character jumps, the weapon is going to start rotating up a little bit. And then as you fall, or sorry, when you jump, it's going to rotate down a little bit. And then as you fall, it's going to start rotating up. And then eventually it's going to settle back down. That's the idea of what we're going to do today. So now that we've looked at it here, we kind of already know what we need to do somewhat, right? Because we basically have already discussed that there is a Z velocity vector that tells us whether we are jumping or not and what, how much we're jumping and whether it's up or down. And we already have a transform modify bone that we've simulated the jump with. So what if we just plug one into the other? <laughs> Let's try that. I'm going to go ahead and right click here, promote to variable, and I'm going to call this jump velocity. And then I'm going to set this right at the end here. Now I'm going to go to the animation graph and inside of that transfer modify bone, which by the way, I've put right at the end because we want the jump to be applied over everything, but there's multiple ways you can go about this. I'm going to drag my jump velocity, get it. And inside of the rotation, I'm going to right click and split the structure pin. We need to figure out, and this is very important, which axis changes whenever I do this. Um, so we, we can actually do that. Hold on, before we split the struct pin, so recombine it for a moment. Um, if we look at it, now it might have been broken. I think we broke it somehow. Okay, there it is. If I rotate now, let's say as we jump, we kind of want this to change. So it's going to be the X. Okay, so let's reset that. Split the struct pin, and then we're going to assign jump velocity to the X and just compile. And now let's try that. As you can see, that is very weird. 
And in fact, the reason why it's very weird has a lot to do with the kind of values we we are adding. So let's check what this jump velocity is. Let's uh let's quickly print it in the event graph. Let's look at it. If we look at it, that is very big value and then it kind of goes down. So maybe not exactly entirely what we want. Let's try to make first, let's just try to make this value smaller. How about that? Let's try with that. So before we set the jump velocity, I'm going to just take this and multiply by 0.1, for example, and then compile. Okay, that already looks a lot closer to what we wanted. Okay, now it does look a little static, so maybe let's try to add some sort of interpolation. I've not shown you before how to do this, so this is going to be a bit of a new thing. We're going to make sure that this value always tries to interpolate to this value smoothly. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use a linear interpolation node or a lerp node float right here. Um, as a matter of fact, this is not the one we're going to use. We need an f interp two. This is the node we're going to use. And what we're going to do in here, this is just as it says, tries to reach target based on distance from current position, giving a nice smooth feeling when tracking a position. So this is just going to smooth this value. What we're going to do is we're going to plug this into target. We're going to plug the current jump velocity into current. We're going to plug this into the jump velocity. So what we're going to do every frame is we're going to go from the jump velocity to whatever this is smoothly. And the way we do that is we're going to get world delta seconds, which is going to give it, as it says right here, the frame delta time. It's just the, the time it took to go from last frame to this frame. This is just very helpful in calculating interpolations. And then this interp speed is going to determine how smooth this is. Let's start with five, for example. If you set this very high, it will basically look exactly like setting the jump velocity directly. So smaller is going to give it a smoother feeling. Let's see it. As you can see, that is already a lot smoother. So it's kind of already looking somewhat like a jump. It doesn't look very good, but it is a jump of some sort. One thing that I do like to do that most people maybe don't do um, is instead of using this if interp node, I'm going to show you a, a little bit more complicated version of this by using spring interpolation. So there is this node called float spring interp, which is a lot more complex, I realize. What this does is basically the same thing, but it does it in sort of using a spring model. So it's going to bounce around a little bit and give us a, a kind of a better feeling for the most part. So let's go ahead and plug in these values as they are in the F interp. So current, target, the world delta seconds and delta time. We don't have an interp speed, so we can ignore that. And then we're going to plug the node itself, plug it into jump velocity and assign jump velocity. And now we still have a lot of values here. So I'm going to show you what we're going to set all these to. Let's remove this one for now. First of all, in spring state, we don't need to set anything. What we're going to do is we're going to right click and promote to variable. And you can leave that as spring state. It doesn't really matter. This is just used by this node to store a few values. Oh, I also removed jump velocity, so go ahead and <laughs> set it again. Now, stiffness and critical damping factor are going to determine how the spring feels. Let's start with just going 0.4 and 0.6. These usually feel pretty good. And then mass is going to determine how heavy the spring is. Um, in our case, I would show you with one. So, okay, actually, I'll show you what it feels like with one, just so you see it. And, and that's basically it. We've, we've kind of assigned everything. You don't really need to assign anything else here. So just go and play it. And now you see that that's like super heavy and it's it's kind of stuck there and it goes very slowly. So that's what it feels. That's what a spring with like one mass feels like in Unreal Engine. So let's just tone this down a lot to 0 0.01. I think it's actually going to need to be smaller than that, but let's start with that. Yeah, see, it still it still feels a little bit too heavy. So let, let's uh, let's set it to even smaller than that. I think I usually set it to like this. 0 0.006 that usually feels pretty good yeah that that is a better spring you see we get some oscillation still we're rotating a lot so maybe we don't want to rotate that much so we can resolve that by simply going to where we multiply the velocity and multiplying this by an even smaller value like 0 0.04 
yeah. And now we kind of have a a jump with just the rotation. Again, if you want to make it, if you want to make the spring kind of go faster, there is ways to do this. You can actually just set this mass to an even smaller value, like 0.3, for example, and then go back here. You will see that it snaps a lot quicker. Now, the values going up, you can't really change that much because that is mostly the jump value itself. And in fact, you do want that to be like that, mostly because, and I'm going to, ooh, don't do that. <laughs> I think this is going to be a very small value and it might still be very bouncy. Uh, yes. So let's, let's uh, remove a few zeros. There we are. Um, one thing you do get with this approach, and I can show you, is that if we fall from higher, it's also going to go lower or it's kind of going to continue rotating, which is great, but we definitely want to limit that. So that's going to be one of the things we do. And after that, the other thing we're going to do is we're also going to add a little bit of location change. So we get... Uh, we can make it a little bit different because it's going to look better that way. So let's first limit that value. How do we limit that? Well, we're going to take this jump velocity before we interpolate to it because this is our target. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to drag from it and say clamp float and use this action right here. And we're going to clamp this value between a set of numbers and the negative value is going to be basically how much it rotates down and the positive is going to be how much it rotates up. Now, I don't know the exact values, but let's just start with 40 minus 40 and 40 and see what that looks like. See how much it rotates. Okay, that that is a lot better. That is already a lot better. I think we are rotating a lot less. And in fact, we can test it by just going to Oh, and also that looks pretty cool with the with the lowering. We can test it by spawning the player right here and you can do that by simply going right here and spawn player at current camera location instead of the spawn point. We're gonna be here and then if I fall off the entire map, you're gonna see that that's as high as the weapon gets. We also have a bit of a death zone, so it is a bit annoying, but we can we can test it from here. See, that's as far as it gets up. So we can actually maybe make it even a little bit lower. So maybe like 30, in fact. Let's try minus 30 and 30. Oh, I did not mean to do that last change, so just ignore that. Okay. So now we kind of have a jump. Let's also add a location change. So right now, this is the jump velocity. We are interpolating that. Let's also assign it to the translation right here. And let's try the effect we're going to go for is kind of like up and then down, maybe. So let's copy that. We don't really even need to copy it, as a matter of fact. Let's just drag it to the Z. Now, we will likely need to have two different values for this because it's not going to be the same applying it to the translation and the rotation. But we'll just start with this for now. You can see now we jump, it goes up, then it goes down. It looks very bad because we have a very huge value. So one way to kind of make that a little bit better is to just multiply it here. I would not recommend doing this, but we'll do it now for testing. Let's just multiply it to 0.3 and then assign this to the translation. And maybe negative 0.3 will be better and compile. See now, now we have a bit of a, a bit of a more interesting jump. So let's let's make it even smaller than that, as a matter of fact. We want this to be. Yeah, that that is already kind of a little more a little more interesting. We're already having more interesting jumps, which is good. You can in fact play around with this value as much as you want, and you can see that we also have it while aiming. That is another fix we have to make. We have to make sure that the jumping is applied a bit differently while aiming so we don't get very weird values. And we'll do that. Um, but this is the core of how to add a procedural jump. There is better ways. There are better ways. And we might go through one of them later on. Um, there is a way to do this with curves. So you have like a lot of control. You have a lot of control over the actual shape of the animation, which will almost feel like animating. So you might also as well animate it. But this is the simplest way to do it procedurally. Now, let's fix the aiming looking very weird. So the way we can do that is if we, for example, go to the event graph and a super simple way 
is if I take the aiming value and right before or right when we kind of clamp this and before we assign it to the target, just so we get the smoothing, anything we do before here, this is going to smooth to perfectly. Anything we do after is just going to multiply and kind of feel a little stiffer. So if I drag from here and type select float, we're going to get a node that allows us to pick between two floats based on this aiming value. This is almost kind of like the blend poses by bool node here, but instead of poses, we're blending between two floats and we're not really blending. We're just picking. But one thing we can do is we can now multiply this result by this selection and then assign that as the target. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to multiply the whole kind of jumping velocity by whatever we want when we aim. So for instance, we can say, and this is going to pick A when we aim. So B is going to be not aiming. So when not aiming, we're going to go to one and let's leave aim to zero, just so you see what this does. So if I go now and jump, it's going to look just like it did before. And if, if I aim and jump, it's not going to do anything. Same if I jump and aim, it's just going to kind of smoothly go to zero. Now. Let's add some value instead of setting it to zero. Let's go with something like 0.3, for example, and then compile. And now if I aim and jump, it's going to be a really small jump. And then if I not, if I don't aim, it's going to be a lot bigger. Oh yeah, that's basically it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed that one. And I'm hoping at some point we'll do the more interesting jumping because this one is very basic and it doesn't look as good as a lot of games. So. Maybe we'll get to it. But for now, I hope that was enjoyable. In the next few tutorials, we'll do procedural weapon sway, and then we'll do damage to enemies and a lot of other interesting stuff. So I hope you'll watch those too. I'll see you in the next one.